Hi guys, my name is Trinity, and if you are here, you must be here to talk about books. Today, I saw Emily Fox do this video, and I thought I would go ahead and do it myself because Goodreads put out a list of the best fantasy and sci-fi novels of the last three years. And while me and Emily Fox definitely have different rating tastes, I was very intrigued to find out what would come up for me. So basically in this video, I'm going to be giving you my opinions on this list. And for books that I haven't read, I will tell you if they're on my TBR or if they are not, just like Emily Fox did in her video. Of the list that they have created, I have read 26 of these books. That's why I wanted to go ahead and do this video because I've read quite a bit of them. So first we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. If you guys have been around this channel for any amount of time, you guys will know that I got so annoyed with how often people talked about this book that I blocked Addie LaRue on my Twitter. And I've just ignored everything past that. One, because V.E. Schwab has a tendency to have these grand ideas with no execution behind it. And it drives me insane because I do want to read her books sometimes whenever I hear the synopsis. And even this book, I really thought to myself, oh, I should probably give it a try. But after the inundation of Addie LaRue, everywhere you turn, just in every single corner, no, no intention of reading this book. From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. <laughs> I have read this book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is fantasy romance that leans heavily into the fantasy aspect of the book. And I really, really enjoyed that part of it. I do like the series as a whole, but the third book kind of falls off a little bit. So I haven't continued but man, is it an addictive read. I really, really enjoyed it. And I really like the romance that develops in the book. Next would be House in the Cerulean Sea. And I have no plans to read that. It's cozy. My brain doesn't do cozy well, and I probably won't like it. Sarah J. Mass, House of Earth and Blood. I did read it. It was okay. <laughs> I actually thought it could be about 300 pages shorter and been a lot better but I was not a fan of this book, this series at all. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I really enjoyed it. I thought that Lee Bardugo's writing was a little bit more elevated than in her young adult series. I liked the setting. We have a girl who attends Yale who's had a horrible life and then she gets taken to this college and gets to kind of rewrite what her life is meant to be. And I think that that's really cool. The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. See Addie LaRue. No, <laughs> I actually read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern and did not like it. I do not like stories that have no direction. I am very much a plot driven reader. So just the thought of trying to pick up something else by Erin Morgenstern it does not appeal to me at all. <laughs> Priory of the Orange Tree. Now, this is a book that I get a little bit of FOMO with. It's not on my TBR. I do hear a lot of people say great things about it. I just don't think I'm going to like it. I think it's going to be one of those that, you know, everybody appreciates the craft of it and I won't because it's slow paced and it's character driven and that's not me. <laughs> Piranesi. Now this one is on my TBR. Ignore everything I just said about slow meandering plots because I have been told I will probably still like this one. And I want to go ahead and give it a shot. I have recently purchased it, so I do plan to read it, but it's one of those that I don't know how quickly I'll pick it up because even though I'm intrigued, I know the slow meandering thing is probably going to get to me. So we'll see. We'll see. 10,000 Doors of January. See, 
Addie LaRue and Starless C. Uh-uh, not for me. The Atlas Six. if you guys have been around for any amount of time, you will know I DNF'd this book and did not like it and gave away my beautiful Fairy Loot edition that I had. A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. So yes, I did like this book. Do I think I'm going to continue with the series? No. I think it's a standard young adult. I, I don't think that there's anything that it does that a thousand other young adults haven't done before it. And so, you know, I I have a lot more Naomi Novik that I need to read, being like the Tamarare series, and I'm just gonna set this aside and call the first book being read all that I need to read of it. TJ Klune, Under the Whispering Door. I have no desire to read any TJ Klune, sorry. The Once and Future Witches, it is on my TBR. I do have an audio of it that was bought for me for Christmas, and so I hope I get to that one soon. Ariadne, I do have that one on my TBR. I got it from Book of the Month, so it's another that I hope to get to soon. She Who Became the Sun. I don't like this book, <laughs> you guys probably know that. I gave it three stars though because I do appreciate some of the things that it tried to do, but it is not my taste at all. And I it just, mm -mm. there was a lot of flowery writing throughout, but that was kind of paired with some pretty bad dialogue and nothing happening on page. So <laughs> I just couldn't handle it. It was not the book for me, not at all. The City We Became, I have decided N.K. Jemison is not the author for me. While I love Emergency Skin, that's the only thing I've read from her that I've actually really enjoyed. Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. I don't plan to read The Stormlight Archive. I have tried to read the first one. I've already forgotten the name of it, Wave Kings, three times. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Gods of Jade and Shadow. Now I had the bad experience of having this as an audio. The audio was horrible. I don't recommend picking this up on audio at all, but I did like the story. So I think if I had read this physically, I probably would have liked it, but it's not my favorite Sylvia Moreno Garcia. The Binding by Bridget Collins. It's not on my TBR, but that's some, that's another book that you guys might be able to convince me to add to the TBR. I just haven't heard a lot about it. And the one booktuber that I know that has talked about it, our tastes don't align. So I'm not going to go off their word, but I do think that there's a chance I could like it. There's a chance that it's probably not for me. The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornicek. I did really like this one. Now this one, I didn't like quite as much as Cersei and Sister Song, but I liked it a little bit more than another book that's gonna come up on this list. And I love stories written in this vein where it's historical, but it's magical. <laughs> and like, I really, really enjoy stories like that. It's why I think I'll probably like Ariadne and Electra and, you know, stories that are all falling into this vein of women from history that their stories have gone untold, even if it's mythology. So A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. I liked this book. It is structurally a problem for me though, because there was never anything linear and it read like a bunch of short stories thrown together and then someone tried to make a book out of it and it didn't work. <laughs> not for me anyway, not for me. But the stories themselves individually are all really good. So I don't know what to say beyond that. <laughs> Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. So African mythology, there's a way that it's told that has like a cadence to it and I, I don't I don't like it <laughs> my brain does not like it and so with this one not only was it a little like wacky the structure was kind of everywhere like there was no structure and it, it confused me it was just one of those books that I'm just like I have no idea what's happened I'm like a hundred pages in and I have no idea what's happened in this book <laughs> but there were many reasons I DNF'd this book Book of Night by Holly Black I liked this one this is Holly Black 
elevated from YA to adult and everything that that entails. Her storytelling reads a lot the same. The writing is better. Her characters are all dark and have issues just like the rest of her works in YA. And it does go a little further in the adult book than her YA. But this is very much in the flavor of Holly Black. The Year of the Witching. Now this was one of my favorite books the year it came out. I think it was 2020 maybe. And I had put it off and put it off until the very like last second in December of that year and was like, you know what? I'm squeezing this in. And oh my gosh, I loved it so much. I told everybody <laughs> who liked horror and that I knew like, please read this, please read this because I love this book. And it's set in a very Puritan setting with a girl who has magical powers. She's a witch and her bloodline is witches. And so it's very cool to watch her become herself in this setting, even though it's very problematic, very, very problematic. But I enjoyed it so much. Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. I liked this one. It wasn't great. And the reason it wasn't great was that killer freaking ending, like dead stop. If you read Black Sun, be prepared for the story to just stop. Like it just ends. There's no <laughs> conclusion. We, we stop in the middle of some pretty big events. And I hated that. I hated that. Also, I really wish this world was a little bit more fleshed out because there is a lot of lore to uncover in this world that is not even touched. Now, the beginning, the opening scene of this book is whew, wild, but it's really, really good. So <laughs> I liked it. I'm trying to decide if I want to continue because there's no way the second book doesn't just pick up right where that left off because it was in the middle of a scene. <laughs> so, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Daughter of the Moon Goddess. That is definitely on my TBR. I've been very excited about that. Winter of the Witch. Bear in the Nightingale is on my TBR. I haven't gotten that far yet. So determined on whether or not I like Bear in the Nightingale. Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. I liked Practical Magic. I don't like the way these prequels are written though, because I was expecting a lot more magic in them and they are just stories about family and they kind of lost me. I mean, practical magic is a story about family anyway, but there's a whole lot of supernatural elements going on around them and playing in the background, but the prequels have not held that same magical quality that practical magic had. Dragon Republic, nope, DNF the Poppy War will not be continuing. For the Wolf, <laughs> I really liked this book. I really liked this book and spoiler alert, I have not liked For the Throne. I've tried twice to read it, had to restart after the first time because I was like, maybe I'm just not in the mood for this and it's not clicking. Got through quite a bit more of it in the second go around, but then just I got bored there. There's something about Red's story that is very engaging, but this <laughs> second story with the other sister, I can't even Neve, I think is her name is not quite so engaging, even though a lot more things are happening with Neve than ever happened with Red. It's just, mm, I'm not enjoying it. I'm not enjoying it. And I have DNF'd it twice. I do still have it in case I ever want to revisit it. But now for now, it's two time DNF. Empire of the Vampire, you can see it's right, right there on my favorite shelf. Oh. Uh, loved it. Love Jay Kristoff. I, <laughs> it's probably the best vampire book I've ever read. I really love the way it was written. I, I had no issues with the pacing of it, even though I've heard a lot of people say that they did. It did never feel slow to me because it was a subject I was interested in. So 
vampires, they, they will always have a place in my heart, whether or not <laughs> they are Jay Kristoff or Charlene Harris or Laurel K. Hamilton or whoever writes them. I will probably always pick it up. I mean, I just read A Dowry of Blood. <laughs> so yes, Empire of the Vampire, huge win. I just recently bought Middle Game, so I'm very excited to explore some more Sean and McGuire. The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. I did really enjoy this book. It did mess with my dyslexia a bit, having it first and third person, because I got real confused. I was like, this is not the same book. That's what my brain was saying. And I really liked the ending of this book. But the second book, mm -mm. I didn't like it. I DNF'd the second book because it went on a very weird tangent of things that I just didn't care about. I wanted to explore what happened in the first book, and we didn't. Cartographers have no interest. The Deep, I have no interest. Kingdom of Copper, I did very recently purchase the rest of the David Bod trilogy. So I will be moving on. I've only read The City of Brass, though, so not there yet. Chosen and the Beautiful, that's actually on my Pop Sugar Challenge this year. The Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth. I, I had, it's not on my TBR. Shadow of the Gods, who my most disappointing read the year I read it because I wanted more of that super powerful character driven plus plot and there's no plot in this book. So I, I didn't like it. I, I didn't like it. I loved Orca as a character and I finished this book, but I was like, man, this is the slowest book I've ever read in my life. I can't handle this. Malice by Heather Walter. I loved this book. I want Miss Rule so bad. I just haven't got my hands on it. And I've seen it at the bookstore a couple times and have almost picked it up, but then have picked up other things that kind of took priority. But I loved this. It was so good. It's a retelling of Sleeping Beauty and yes, please. I need all of it. Jim Butcher Peace Talks, I've DNF'd Dresden Files, not planning to continue there. The Awakening by Nora Roberts, I actually just got this book like uh, a few weeks ago. Magic for Liars, it's on my TBR. There's a, quite a few books from Sarah Gailey that are on my TBR that I haven't gotten around to. Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff, absolutely love Jay Kristoff. Mia is one of my favorite characters of all time. I really, really, really hope that my husband buys me the Lit Joy leather bound copies of Nevernight because I need them. I need them in my life. The Wolf and the Woodsman I do have on Audible. The Jasmine Throne was not for me. I didn't like how slow the pacing was. And even though I was very intrigued by the characters that were here, I'm not a character driven reader. So there was not enough action for me to stay invested and I think I got about 30% of the way through it before I was like this is just it's not it it's not it a little hatred Joe Abercrombie I DNF'd first law so not gonna happen the Empress of Salt and Fortune by Ning Vo that is actually on my TBR Spellbreaker by Charlie Holmberg that's on my TBR it's actually on my TBR card I'm looking right at it Library of the Unwritten, I absolutely loved, but because I couldn't get past all of the negative things said about Archive of the Forgotten, I got rid of both of these. So while I love Library of the Unwritten, I would definitely recommend going into it and not planning to read the second book. Sorrow Land by Rivers Solomon, I did read this. I can't tell you what it's about. I remember a girl goes into the woods and has twin babies. That's what I remember. <laughs> That's it. I didn't like this book. No, mm -mm. it was very weird. That's all I can say. The Inheritance of Orcadia Divina. I know, not on my TBR. <laughs> Magical Midlife Madness by K.F. Breen. I don't think I've ever even heard of this book, so... I don't know. Ruin of Kings is on my TBR. I had, I'm putting it off. <laughs> Admittedly, I'm putting it off. Master of Jen by P. Jelly Clark is on my TBR. A Spindle Splintered is on my TBR. 
Rise of the Magics is on my TBR. I've read the first book, which would be year one of this one. And I really liked it, but it's centered around a pandemic and I read it during the pandemic. So I never quite finished the trilogy, but I did recently buy it, hoping I could reread year one post pandemic and then continue the series. Patricia Briggs, Storm Cursed, Mercy Thompson, I DNF'd a long time ago. A Marvelous Light, No Interest, Sort of Kaigen. I don't get the hype surrounding Sort of Kaigen, and I hate the main character. So, like, I, the mom figure, oh, I just can't stand her. I don't like it when people whine, and she's very whiny, very, very whiny, through the whole of the book until about three quarters of the way through, and I couldn't stand her. I didn't like that. I did think there were some really cool elements in play in Sword of Kagan, and I think that's where it gets a lot of the praise that it gets, but mm, mm -mm. I, I wanted to punch the mom through most of the book. The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie. That is definitely on my TBR. Burning White, Brant Weeks. You guys can see all of Lightbringer right here. I've read it. I loved it. It's my second favorite series of all time. Currently, currently, it's about to get dethroned, and I'm going to keep that as a um, tidbit for later. <laughs> the Hidden Palace, I do have it on my TBR. I did read Gollum and the Genie very recently, so haven't got to that one yet. The Girl in the Stars by Mark Lawrence. Yes, it's on my TBR, as is all Mark Lawrence, but I have yet to pick him back up since Jorg, and uh, I guess I need to read Red Sister. The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. That is on my TBR. The First Girl Child by Amy Harmon. Never even heard of it. Not on my TBR. Troy by Stephen Fry. It will probably make it onto my TBR after reading some other Stephen Fry because there are some books of his that have really caught my attention. Troy is just not my favorite story, but uh, yeah, it'll probably end up there. In an Absent Dream by Seanan McGuire. I just recently read the first of this novella series, so I haven't added this to my TBR because I haven't continued the series yet. I don't know if this is as far as I'm going to get. <laughs> I don't know if I'll quit at the second book, so we'll see. Oh, look at that. Holy sister. Didn't I just say I needed to read Red Sister first? <laughs> Kayake. Okay, this is the other book that I was talking about when I talked about The Witch's Heart. The Witch's Heart and Kayake are kind of at the same level where Circe and Sister Song are at like just the tier above in writing style in like the way that the magic feels in the world and the way it's utilized. Like they, the Circe and Sister Song are a little bit more elevated. Now, Kayake and The Witch's Heart are still very good. They're still very good. They're just not five star. They're four star. <laughs> the Unspoken Name, that is on my TBR. And The Library of the Dead, I don't think that that is going to be on my TBR anytime soon because I've heard not so great things. All right, that is the 72 books that Goodreads says are the best of fantasy for the last three years. What do you think? Do you think these books should be on there? Do you think that there should be other books on here? What were your favorite books of the last three years? I definitely am missing uh, <laughs> one of my favorites <laughs> on this list, but let me know. What do you guys think? All right, that's it for me today. Like, subscribe, do all the fun things, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!